If you want to do well on the TOEFL IBT, especially when it comes to the uh, writing part of the test and also the speaking part of the test, you need to avoid wordy sentences. So it's important to be as concise as possible. Eliminate redundancies. For example, Helen is a smart and intelligent woman. Helen is a smart woman or even. Do we even need that? Helen is smart. The second thing. Avoid unnecessary repetition of words. We don't want to repeat something too many times. Repetitious. Our student is physically ill today. Revised. Our student is physically ill today. Get rid of empty or inflated phrases. Many phrases can be taken out with little or no loss of meaning. For example, it is my opinion that abortion should be outlawed. You could simply say abortion should be outlawed. Here's a checklist of wordy phrases. You'll see this is wordy, the wordy phrase. Here's the more concise version. Where it says area, field of, omit, it means don't even use it if you see omit. It's not even needed. Notice, respective, respectively, most of the time you don't even need it. How about very? Even words like very, extremely, really, uh, you don't need those words typically in writing. They don't do much. All right, the next point. Reduce clauses to phrases, phrases to single words. By doing this, you make your writing more concise. Okay, let me give you an example here. How about, wow, this is a tough one, but we visited Washington, D.C., which is the capital of the United States. How about we visited Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States. Okay, active verbs. A lot of times, you don't really need to use active verbs that much, especially the be verb. Uh, if it's possible, use a more concise version or at least take maybe you can get rid of the be verb and you can state uh, that verb with a more description but sometimes for example John was responsible for soliciting donations to the chemistry club you, you got to use a be verb you got no choice there or Mark Jones is a professor at the University of Southern California again uh, you don't have a choice you're kinda stuck with that verb but how about this I was rebellious changes to I rebelled. Or was electrifying changes to electrified. Do you see that? So what I'm saying is if it's possible, maybe the word that comes after it, this is called the main verb, this is the auxiliary verb. Sometimes the main verb can be stated in the past tense and it carries all the action and you don't really need that be verb. So maybe sometimes with the uh, past progressive tense, past continuous tense, you don't always need it. You can maybe use a simple past instead stating the verb more directly.